In this video, we will go over how to create fake data to populate into your tables. So in this case, we're going to be focusing on the product table and the order line table. In the product table, we'll be inserting product ID, description, finish price, and on hand. We won't be worrying about product line ID for right now because this is a foreign key. For order line, we will be inserting order line ID, order ID, product ID, and quantity. So in order to do this, I'm going to use the web page called mockaroo.com. Just think of Kangaroo, but change King to Mock, and that's the web page. First thing I'm going to do is change the default format from CSV to SQL, and then I'm going to enter in the name of the table that I'm going to insert this data into. This is going to be the product table. You'll notice here there is a checkbox to include the create table syntax. However, I strongly discourage you from doing this for three reasons. Number one, it doesn't include everything that we've taught you, such as primary keys and foreign keys, etc. Number two, you don't learn how to actually create a table using the SQL because there is learning and actually typing it out. And number three, I actually have my server check for copying and pasting code, and I will discourage you from doing that. The third thing we're going to change down here is the number of rows. So this will vary depending on the table that you're going to be inserting the data into. So for example, if we only have 10 employees, we will only need to have 10 records here. But if we have a thousand products, we will need to insert a thousand products. For this case, I'm going to just say we have 50 products. So what I'm going to do is come up to here in the field name. And as you can see here, this is a list of all the fields that exist in my table. I will go ahead and change these to match my table. So this first one is product ID. The second one is description. The third one is finish. The fourth one is price. And the fifth one is on hand. This sixth one I don't need, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And then notice here, this is the type of data. So the type of data here, row number, is going to basically be your auto increment. It's going to increase the number for every new record I insert. Description is going to be word. This is going to be a lorem ipsum, so it's the gibberish that you see on some web pages. I'm going to say that the description of this product is going to be 5 to 20 words. Now you may want to just do this for right now and then change those words to something meaningful, but I'll show you what this is going to look like when I actually generate this. So finish, we are going to instead use a custom list. This allows me to specifically pick the words that I'm looking for. So we could say walnut, oak, birch, cherry, and pine. So then we could have it say random, or could have it be sequential, meaning we'll pick each one of these and then continue in the order that I have. So I can pick random, and that's what we're going to do here. I can also specify if this is an optional column, which it is, I'm going to say that 20% of these are going to be blank. Notice this function. This allows me to use a formula to be able to compute some kind of value. So that's up to you if you want to use that. So then we're going to do price, and what I'll do is just type in number here. So, so number allows me to have numbers with and without decimals. So in this case, this price could be with decimals. So I'm going to say the price max is going to be $50. And the minimum is going to be $25. I will say that we will carry this out to two decimal places so that we could have $25.99 and so on. And then the next thing that you see here is on hand. This is going to be the quantity that is on hand. So again, this is going to be a number data type. So I'm going to pick a number uh, between 1 and 15. I will not have decimals here, and this would allow me to generate a value between those numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and click the preview first. This is what the table data would look like. You'll see here that I do have null values. 20% of them are null. We have the product IDs that have been sequentially iterated. We then have the description that is based on those lorem ipsum words. We have the price that is in the range that I specified, up to the decimals I specified, and then the quantity that is on hand. If we go to the SQL tab, here's the actual SQL scripts to be able to insert these records into your tables. So what you would do is you would click the download data, this would download it in SQL format, you just copy that, run that against the web server, and then you have all that data added to your table. Okay, so the next table that we're going to create is the order line table. And I'm going to say there's 150 records in this one. So the first ID is going to be my order line ID. And then the second is going to be order ID. The third is going to be product ID. And the fourth is going to be quantity. I'm going to go ahead and delete this fifth one. 
All right, for order line ID, since this is my primary key and it's going to auto increment, I'm going to keep it as row number. For order ID, I'm going to go ahead and pick number. And then for product ID, I'm going to pick number. Now, if you remember when I created the product, I had 50 records. So what I'm going to do, since this is going to be a foreign key that references the primary key in the product table, I'm going to say that we are going to pick a number between 1 and 50. This will then allow this foreign key to match directly up to the primary key. So we do the same thing for order. So let's say we had 25 orders. This, these numbers would randomly match up to the order ID from the order table. And then finally, quantity, I'm going to say it's between 1 and 10 is the total number of quantity that they ordered of this particular product. Again, I can preview this. And we can see all the numbers that are there. The quantity is a decimal, so let's go ahead and change that to not be decimal. And then preview it again. And then we can see that we have the numbers that I want. So I could go ahead and download that data, run all those SQL scripts in order to insert into the database. Now let's just look at a few other formats here. So we have names. We have Boolean, whether it's true or false. We have colors, we have currency, we have um, email addresses, we have first names, last names, gender specific first name, last names, we have abbreviation for gender, we have street addresses, we have postal codes, phone numbers, etc. are all in here. So if you are looking for a specific thing, just come up here and type in street and you can see street address or postal for postal code. And then you can just pick these. Now, the good thing about uh, street address, if you have street address, city, state, and zip code, it will actually pick a city, state, and zip code that are all related to each other. One other thing I wanted to mention is how to create dates. So if you wanted to add another field, then we'll call this one date, and another field called time, we would pick for our date, just search date, and pick date. And then for time, we just come up here and search for time. And then what we want to make sure is that these dates are in MySQL format. So we're going to click in this drop down and we're going to select the MySQL date format. And then we're going to also pick 24 hour for the clock. And we can then specify the range of the times and dates. So as you go through working on your group project, I encourage you to use this tool to generate fake data. If you have real data in your database, go ahead and use the data that you do have if it's not confidential.